countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents... X minus one... Tonight, The Lungamina by Gordon R. Dixon. Blame Clay Harbank, if you like, for what happened at Station 563. Or blame Bill Peterborough, the one we called the kid. I blame no one. I'm a Dorsai man. That means I was brought up on one of those tiny planets a million light years from nowhere. Being a Dorsai man is quite a responsibility. We are a very polite people. We have to be. Because when we get angry, we fight to the death. It all began that evening that Clay Harbank began reminiscing about his home planet, Lulungamina. We were sitting around the recreation room of 563. There was a card game going on in one corner. Lulungamina. The very name sounds like music, doesn't it, Mort? You know me, Clay. I'm a Dorsai man. I've been on the Dorsai planets. I've seen them all knocking around this universe for 35 years. But when it comes to sheer beauty, Lulungamina. How long since you've been home, Clay? Home? 20 years, Mort. 20 stinking, miserable years? Well, that'll be over soon. Another 10 days. You gonna miss old 563? Miss this godforsaken little asteroid? Not for a minute. I will miss your ugly face around here. At least I will. I'm gonna miss your gloomy dorsi puss, too. <laughs> Mort, why don't you get out of it? You've had more years in space service than any of us. You've probably got enough credits to get out, too. Me? I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Couldn't you go home? You should know better than that. The Denebrian trouble? The Denebrian trouble... You could go to Earth. What for? Ever been there? Never once. And I've never wanted to. I've seen too many Earthmen. Like the kid over there. Mm, He's green in service. He's full of greed and stupid hate like the rest of them. No, that's not for me. Looks as if the game's breaking up. Here he comes. Well, if it isn't the big gambler from the Windy Planet, uh, what's its name? Lulungomina. Yeah, How's the piggy bank coming, Dad? The piggy's a gentleman, kid. He never overeats, so he won't ever get indigestion. <laughs> Sour grapes. You see this wad of credits? 500. How long you have to work for 500 credits, Dad? How many trips you have to make around this asteroid? How much closer to fall in your grave you have to come? You look as if you made a killing. I always make a killing. I'm a natural-born gambler. And I don't just talk about it like some... I think I'll go out and take a turn around the station, Mort. Fine, I'll go with you. It's, uh, stuffy in here. Don't bother. I'd rather be alone. (laughs) Big shot. Knocked around the planets for 35 years. Used to have a reputation as the hottest gambler in the systems. Comes from the most beautiful planet in the universe. Bull. Why don't you lay off him? Kid, let me give you a piece of sound advice. Go ahead. Lay off Clay Harbank. He's been around the systems a lot longer than you have. He may not be any chicken, but he's a tough baby when the situation calls for it. You trying to scare me, Mort? I thought you Dorsai guys were smarter than that. I'm beginning... No, look, kid. No, 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 no offense, Mort. You, 
I, I mean, I wasn't trying to insult the Dorsite people or anything. I, 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 I got to go do a flight check. I'll see you. We were in bad shape. The 20 of us at Frontier Station 563 on the very edge of the human area had gone sour. Half the men had applications for transfer in already. What I told the kid about Clay being tough, well, that was a bluff to keep him off. Nobody knew better than I did that Clay was burned out inside like a used-up rocket. I put on a spacesuit and went out to join him. Oh, hi, Mort. Hi. Beautiful night, huh? Nice. Back on Lulunga Mina on a night like this, the rakish flowers open up and you can hear them singing. There are six moons, and every one of them is like a yellow lantern. My mom and dad and I used to live on the edge of a lotus pool. Here I go talking about home again. Hmm, figures. A guy who's been saving up for ten years to get home is bound to start thinking about it when the time comes. I wish you could come with me, Mort. Clay, tell me something. Yes? Do you ever get the urge to gamble again? Do I get the urge to gamble? Mort... You ever watch a man who's been on P.O.N. for a while? When he's broken the habit, you can't get him near the stuff. He despises it. And yet, the same man is liable to go back on with no provocation. Well, that's the way it is when you've gambled all your life. I figured. Maybe that's why I keep talking about home. Every time I hear the kid flipping those cards in the recreation room, I start talking about home. Have you noticed? I've noticed. But this time I'm going to make it, Mort. I tried three times before. This time I've got the dough and I know I'm going to make it. I think you will, Clay. You know what did it? No. Lulongomina. That's what saved me this time. The thought of that beautiful planet. Well, when you get there, you can send me a photo tape. <laughs> At the rate we get visitors, it should reach me in five or six years. You'll be out by then. You'll be home. I'll never go home, Clay. Never. Well, that's Red 4. Screens must have picked up a ship in the galaxy. Maybe we'll get a visit. Uh, keep us from going local anyway. Coming in? No, I think I'll stay out a while. Well, I'm going to check the screen. See you later. Red 4 meant simply that a ship was entering the galaxy. The chances of it touching down on 563 were pretty remote unless it happened to need a clearance for Earth or Mars. The screen was black by the time I got there, but the kid was filing a report. Oh, hi, Mort. Hey, what's a Hicks abroad like? Why? We're having one for a visitor. You don't say. Hey, I just came in over the receiver. What'll he be like? A Hicks abroad? Mm. Mm, stiff as a poker, proud as Lucifer, honest as sunlight, and tied as a camel on his way through the eye of a needle. What do they look like? Oh, they're kind of humanoid, but they have a deadpan face that never changes, like a mask. Well, they're a little scary, I hear. Oh, uh, that's a green skin and the scales. Also, they run about eight feet tall. <laughs> I wouldn't tangle with one if I were you. Back on Denebria once, I saw a Hixerbrod rip a man to ribbons with its claws. Why? The man made the mistake of insulting Hixa. That's one of the twin planets they come from. Pretty touchy, aren't they? Not really. They're a very level-headed race. You know the Hicksabrod reputation, don't you? No, you didn't hear much about them on Earth. Well, they're the first and only mercenary political arbitrators in the known universe. A Hicksabrod can be hired, but he's absolutely incapable of being influenced or bribed. He tells the cold truth and nothing but the cold truth. And, brother, when a Hicksabrod tells you the truth, it's plenty cold. It really lets you have it, huh? They're a small race and very much in demand. If some kind of political dispute comes up from planetary to inter-alien, both sides hire a Hicksabrod to represent them. That way they know the other side is being completely honest. Oh, well, that's very interesting, you know. Very interesting. <laughs> I could tell there was something on the kid's mind, but of course I didn't know what it was. Most of the talk in the recreation room that night centered around the arrival of the Hicks abroad. Landing beacons were turned on, 
and we waited for another radio communication. Hey, anybody want to sit in on this next hand? What? No, thanks. Well, I know better than to ask the galaxy's foremost gambler here. That's right, kid. Well, maybe when this Hicks of Rod gets here, we'll be able to work up a decent game. Do Hicks of Rods gamble? No, kid, they don't gamble. That's too bad. Well, we can always sit and listen to you lying about what a beautiful place La Lungamina is. Kid, you just went too far. Yeah, you're going to do something about it? That's right, I'm going to punch your little nose. Uh, you... hey, hey, break it up. Uh, break it up. Uh, Clay, you all right? Uh, yeah, I'm... I'm okay. Well, you better get to the infirmary. Have your mouth taken care of. Kid, you get to your quarters. Since when are you giving orders? I'm telling you to get to your quarters. You better do what he says, kid. He's a Dorsai man. That's all I've been hearing since I got here. What big gamblers come from La Lunga Mina and how Dorsai men are killers. So far, I've seen nothing, but I heard a lot of talk. You're gonna get to your quarters? I'll give you five seconds to start moving. You better go ahead, kid. Okay, okay, okay Maud. I'm letting you bluff me out of the game this time. Just remember, there's gonna be other games. Next time, I won't be bluffed. He left the recreation room. I felt a slight and not unpleasant shiver run down between my shoulder blades, and my eyes were still hot. I'd almost lost my control that time, and my senses told me I'd better be careful. For the next three days, the tension of 563 was almost unbearable. Clay Harbank seemed to age 20 years after the kid knocked him down. Now hear this, all personnel. Now hear this, all personnel. A ship is approaching for flight check. A ship is approaching for flight check. Report to Central. Report to Central. Well, this is it, Clay. We're getting the Hicks abroad. Seems almost like home having a Hicks abroad with us. They're all over the Tarzian system, you know. You speak Hicks abroad? You have to on Lulungamina. Oh, I didn't know that. I picked it up during the third exploration. Long time ago, huh? <laughs> We're not getting younger, Clay. Yeah, I found that out. Ah, don't take it so big. He's just a punk kid. Sure, and I'm just a dumb old man. Ah, oh, forget it. Ah, that's touchdown. You ought to be here in a minute. Well, that does it. He's down. Look at that ship, huh? Let's go. You'll need some help with his baggage. <laughs> The ship was a silvery one-man job, the kind that have taken the Hicks abroads all over the universe. The cabin door slid back, and the Hicks has stepped out. He was as green and scaly as a lizard, but there was a certain unmistakable dignity in his bearing. Since I spoke the language, I was the first to greet him. Felt the Hutch and Hicks abroad. Welcome to this place. I greet you, Dorsai man. My name is Mort Bjansky. I am called Dorlasis. Come. I'll show you to your quarters. Thank you. How, uh, how long will you remain here? Only for one night. I wish clearance for Mars. Mm, I'm sure it can be handled. This way. I wondered how he knew I was a Dorsai man. And then it seemed obvious. My broken nose, the scars, the lined face. Nobody could mistake a human from the Dorsai planet's. Still, it scared me a little. I kept wondering if he had anything to do with interplanetary police. I tried to put it out of my mind. It was no use. Mind if I come in, Clay? Sit down. Have a smoke. Thanks. Where's the Hicks abroad? In his room, getting cleaned up for dinner. Strange guys, aren't they? Well, there's something even stranger going on. What's that? The kid's in there with him. With the Hicks? Mm Mm-hmm. What do you suppose they're talking about? I don't know. I wish I did. Kid's probably trying to get the Hicks into a dice game. I doubt it. What's on your mind, Mort? Clay, you've been around. Are there any Hicks abroads in interplanetary police? A few. Why? I don't know. I just had a feeling, you know. You're dreaming up bogeymen. Maybe. Besides, you're not in any trouble outside the Dorsai system. I killed a human, Clay. Not deliberately? In a rage. 
Happens all the time on Dorsai, doesn't it? Not to an officer of Intergalactic. Besides, that was 25 years ago. There's no statute of limitations in the systems. Nobody knows but me, right? You don't have to be clairvoyant to wonder why a man hasn't been back to his home planet for 25 years. You uh, think the kid... I don't know. He's got no love for me. Still, he doesn't know anything. How would he know this Hicksabrot is an agent, if he is? Couldn't say. Where are you going? Well, I think I'll take a look at that message the kid filed. The one we got when we first picked up the Hicksabrot on the screens. Let me know what you find, if anything. I walked through the empty corridors to the communication center. I went directly to the files where incoming messages are kept and flicked the tab until I got to notices of arrivals. There, two days before, was a report of the arrival of Dorlasis. I ran my finger down the statistics until I came to the line that said, Point of Origin of Flight. It read, Tarsian Galaxy. That was where Clay Harbank's Lulongamina was. I read further, where it said, Nature of Business. My blood ran cold as I spelled out the words, Criminal... Come in. Welt the Hotchin Hicksabrod. I greet you, Dorsai man. Is there anything you require? Nothing, thank you. I uh, came to tell you that we'll have dinner tonight at 800 hours. The young Earthman has already informed me. There's a shortage of raw meat here. I've brought my own food, thank you. I uh, see you came in from the Tarsian planets. Yes. You didn't happen to be in the Dorsai planets before that? No. Well, I thought perhaps you might have some news. I came from intergalactic headquarters. Yes, I... Uh, I saw your flight check. Then you know my mission. Yes. Good. How long do I have to pack? I will be leaving at 700 hours tomorrow morning. Can you be ready by then? Yes, I guess so. Good. I uh, don't suppose there's any point in appealing to you. Hicksabrods are supposed to be totally without emotion. There is no point in appealing. <laughs> Funny thing. I've been running away from this moment for 25 years, and now that it's come, I'm glad. We'll uh, be going back to the Dorsites? Yes, to intergalactic headquarters. After all these years. Home. I don't suppose a Hicksabrod knows what that feeling is like. I will expect you at 700 hours. Now, if you don't mind, I wish to prepare my food. One thing. Yes? Did the young Earthman tip you off about me? No. Funny. I could have sworn it was him. That was that. When a Hicksabrod tells you no, you can bet your life he isn't lying. I began to wonder how they located me. I began to wonder what he and the kid had talked about. I began to wonder a lot of things. Well? He's an agent for Intergalactic. Well, that doesn't prove he's after you. He is. How do you know? I just talked to him. Lord in heaven. Ah, uh, it isn't so bad, really. Just think, I'll be going home. <laughs> I'm going to kill that kid. Clay. I'm going to kill him. Clay, listen to me. The kid didn't turn me in. You said... I said he was talking to the Hicks... I just asked him, and the Hicks told me it wasn't the kid. They don't lie. So don't go blowing off. It's going to be hard. Ten days. It doesn't have to be ten days. What do you mean? How many credits do you need to buy your way out? Another 500, next payday. Don't wait. Don't wait? I have over 900 credits. I'll turn them over to you. More? Listen, I don't need them. Well, you can pay off tomorrow and fly as far as the Tarzan chain with me and the Hicks. It's a very nice thing, Mort. Will you do it? I'll think about it. Let you know after dinner. I thought of running away, but there was really no place to run once they tracked you down. And the Hicksabrods were utterly relentless once they'd agreed to bring a man in. Since they had no feelings, they made no judgments. They were absolutely certain that a man would get a fair trial. I packed my stuff and went into dinner. 
The Hicksabrod was at the head of the table eating his raw chinsu meat. Pass the gravy, please. Don Lassis. Yes? They tell me that the Hicksabrod home planet is a very beautiful place. It is true. Well, I'm from Earth myself. Yes. I'm curious to know what this beautiful planet of yours looks like. The kid's pretty talkative tonight. What's cooking? I don't know, but I don't trust it. The flora and fauna are maintained in excellent natural balance. No local surplus has exceeded 1% of the normal population for the last 60,000 years. Life on Hicksa is predictable. The weather is controlled within the greatest limits of feasibility. The symmetry of the landscape is without parallel in the universe. Very pretty picture. Very attractive home world. But I regret to inform you, Dor Lassis, that I've been given to understand that it pales into insignificance when compared with another beauty spot in our universe. Your Earth? I wish I could say yes. No, no. This place is so wonderful, I doubt if an Earth man like me could get in. In fact, I've never seen it. But I've been hearing about it for some months now. And either it's the most wonderful place in the universe, or the man who's been telling me about it is a rotten liar. Get your gun, kid. Get your gun. Why guns? You call me a liar. Why use guns when it's possible to prove the thing one way or another with complete certainty? For months now, you've been telling me two things. One, that you used to be a gambler. Two, your precious Lulungamina is the most wonderful place in the universe. The question is, is either statement true? They're both true. You'll back them up? With my life. I'm not asking you to back them with your life. Just back them with that nice little hoard you've been accumulating all these years. Why don't? Well, you said you were a gambler. Bet with me and prove it. Suppose I do. How do we prove my statement about Lulungomina? That's easy. We have with us at this table a Hicksabrod. In a conversation with him, I found out that he's just visited every planet in the Tarzian chain. Now, as everyone knows, a Hicksabrod never lies. Do you think you could judge this point, Dorlasis? The point can be judged. Well, gambler... Quay, it's a trick. Don't bet. How much will you bet, kid? All I got... The equivalent of ten years' pay. Well? You're on. (laughs) Dorlasis, okay if I question you? Proceed. You've been to the planet in the Tarzian chain, which this man calls his home? I must ascertain the position of the planet. The fourth planet. Ah, yes. The one with six moons. That's it. I've been there recently. As you well know, since we spoke of it only this afternoon. We did speak of it, that's true. Now, will you tell me, you you know the planet. Yes. You know its geography. I do not repeat myself. Is it a large planet? No. Is it a rich planet? No. Was there not a rain of radioactive fallout from an explosion of a nearby star only five months ago? There was. Did it not destroy every piece of vegetation and leave this planet a gutted, smoking ruins, charred and ugly? It did. Well, gambler? You haven't asked him the main question yet, kid. Would you like to ask him? All right. Hicksabrod, the question to be judged is this. Is Lulungomina the most beautiful and the most wonderful place in the universe? Yes. It is. What? Well, kid? It's a trick. It's a rotten trick. I don't believe it. The Hicks is... <laughs> the eyes of the Hicks abroad were narrow and baleful as he pushed back his chair. You could almost feel them burning as he dragged his scaly feet over toward the kid. He stopped about six inches from the kid and held both his hands up, palms near the kid's eyes. There was a clicking sound, and we watched 11 sets of gleaming razor-like claws shoot up from the tips of the Hicks abroad's fingers. Their points were almost against the kid's eyes. Look at my hands, Earthman. Are they not clean? Yes. Do you doubt that I have told the truth? No. no, no. Then there is nothing further to discuss. I bow to you, gentlemen. I thank you for your hospitality. You will excuse me. We stood around and watched that proud, frightening figure drag itself out of the room. The kid was trembling like a leaf as he drew a bank draft for ten years' pay and handed it to Clay Harbeck. The next morning, Clay and I boarded the Hicks Abroad ship, and four days later, we touched down at the outer planet of the Tarzan chain. 
Well, this is where I get off, Mort. I... I don't know what to say, really. I guess you know how I feel. I think I do, Clay. Let's just say so long. There will be no need for goodbyes. What? Both of you are leaving the ship here. But I thought I... I intend to return to intergalactic headquarters empty-handed. Empty-handed? But, but they'll question you. What will you tell them? The truth, of course. But... You have told me nothing. But I assume... I am not interested in your assumption. You asked me my mission. I told you it was a criminal investigation. You said you assumed you would go back with me. And I told you when my ship was departing. There is nothing more to be said. But surely you know... What? Don't say anything. A Hicksabrod deals only with facts. What is absolutely known. They're the most literal beings in the universe. Let it go with that. Goodbye, gentlemen. I am grateful for the pleasure of your company. Five minutes later, Clay Harbank and I shook hands at the exit of the spaceport on Tarsus 10. But before we parted, there was one thing I had to know. Clay, one thing before you go. Yes? How did you know the Hicksabrod would lie about Lulungamina? He didn't lie, Mort. A Hicksabrod never lies. But Lulungamina... Mort, let me tell you something. Lulungamina is a word in use throughout the Tarsian planets. Actually, it's a Hicksabrod word. It means home. All I did was ask the Hicksabrod if home was beautiful. He simply said yes. And a Hicksabrod, as everybody knows, doesn't lie. You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features the Finn O'Donovan novelette, Bad Medicine, the story of a robot therapist that never failed to effect a cure, even if it had to convert itself into a typhoid Mary to do so. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you Lulungamina, a story from the pages of Galaxy written by Gordon R. Dixon and adapted for radio by George Lefferts. Featured in the cast were Ralph Camargo, Ned Weaver, Jack Grimes, Bob Hastings, and Kermit Murdoch. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. X-1 came to you from our Radio City studios in New York. Next week, listen to Project Mastodon, Clifford Seamock's story on X-1. Follow the news with Chet Huntley tonight on the NBC Radio Network.